Hey, everybody. Uh, Gosh, uh, the world keeps changing. You know, we've been talking a lot about the plague and the quarantine and all this COVID stuff. But then, like, we released an episode last week and that episode was recorded and edited before the death of George Floyd. Oh. And so much has happened since then. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it's only been like a week and a half. Crazy. I can't. It's a blur. Uh, (laughs) So we were talking about whether or not we should do just some podcasting about our nation in crisis, but we've been doing nothing but talking about our nation in crisis. So I think podcasting. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, yeah, right. Off of the podcast airwaves. Uh, So we're just going to step back into escapism for a little bit here. I think we'll be back soon, either here or maybe we'll sort of resurrect the kid for a weekend feed that we have left uh, dusty for so long and, and do some more talking about the state of our world. Maybe try to get some guests in that know more about this than we do. Um, but holy shit. Like, so yeah, today's just, we're just going to talk about the Witcher, but um, black lives do matter and some serious reforms need to be done in the way that we are policing and mm-hmm. what is, I mean, I, I, I kind of want to say a police state now because it's starting to feel like it. Like we have mayors and governors that are kowtowing at the whim of the police and right. defending them at all costs. And it seems like because they're maybe afraid of what happens if you cross the police. And this is getting really scary. Well, also, there's uh, big ramifications when you ha- admit to wrongdoing over the years. Right. Yeah. It's, it's Nobody very- wants to admit that they've been ignoring this problem. It's uh, it's very easy for some of us to go like, hey, our country's been, I mean, systemic racism has been the whole time, right? I mean, once there was the overt stuff like racism, there's always been ways to keep people down and keep people in power. Um, it's very easy for us to say that, but I guess maybe not so easy for the entrenched politicians to say it. Like, and Biden's kind of saying some of that now, but like this has been missing from our national conversation forever for way too long Um, right right people don't they're still shying away with from it a lot of great gains were made in the civil rights movements of the 60s and everything but there was Mm -hmm. a lot still left to be done of course change comes so slow you can keep neighborhoods down you can keep a whole class of people down just by drawing the congressional lines the right way and the way you appropriate money and then the way you police those neighborhoods too. That makes a huge difference. And And the way you govern minimum wage, things like that, making it affordable to actually live and not have to work two jobs, sometimes three jobs. People have to work. Yeah. If you want to fix this shit, a minimum standard of living is definitely one of the keys and healthcare goes along with that. We've been talking about that forever. Nobody Uh, should have to work that much. Nobody should have to make that little. Yeah, I agree. It's crazy. It was that quote. I know I've I've played it on this podcast before. One of these podcasts, one of our podcasts, was the quote from George W. Bush when he was, you know, at a at a rally or something, for, and and someone got up and and asked him a question and prefaced it by saying, "I work three, four jobs," mm-hmm. and I, you know, this, and he says something like, "She works four jobs just to make sure she has roof over kids' heads." <laughs> That's uniquely American. And he was saying it as like, "I love right, that work it's ethic." It's the American dream. Right, like work hard and you'll make it. Mm-hmm. But no one should have to do she's that. She's not shit. making it. That's right. why she's working so fucking hard, you ass. But she was on his side anyway. You she ass. wasn't she wasn't saying it like I work four jobs, please fix the system. She was like I work four jobs right. and everybody Good should because that's how we get ahead. Right, I work hard <laughs> because I have to and I'm proud of it. We just need to up our standards. And then well, that- they don't know, but people don't know any better and that's the problem. Like that people in that socioeconomic People accept their fate. They don't Maybe. know what it's like to be not in the position that they're in. Mm-hmm. But then when you go to the issues of race, there's probably some of that. And there's probably also of some course. of, you know, you watch TV and you see that everybody else is doing just fine. For the mm-hmm. most part, you hear the economy's booming. Right. And look and at you. You hear that food stamps should be cut because we don't need them. Like you hear all these things. And then truly like, you could be walking down the street or jogging down the street and just get shot by a couple of fucking redneck assholes because mm-hmm. they think you look fishy. And then a lot of the times nothing's done. Like I, in that particular case of Ahmed Aubrey, like those guys are, you know, awaiting, awaiting a trial now, right? but a lot of people get off. 
Yep. A lot of people, yep. like, you can just say they look threatening and then nothing will happen. He and robbed the- me. He hurt me. He did something. He right. pointed a knife at me. Yeah. Anything. <laughs> You could just say he's threatening me, and then you could right. get the cops to come kill someone. You could, for you. There's an African American man in the park threatening right. me. It was the Battle of the Coopers. It was the mm-hmm. Guy Cooper and then the Bird Amy, Watcher Amy versus Cooper, the Dog Walker. Right. right. And she could have gotten him killed. And she says she's not racist. She's She says she's a liberal, she's a Democrat, whatever she is. And she doesn't think she's racist, but she now, lost granted, her mind in that moment. What happened before that to get, get her to that point? I don't know. She got a fucked up worldview. She doesn't want anyone telling her what to do with her dog. That's what it was all about. She just got enraged because the guy told her she should have her dog on a leash, which she should. Uh, and then she, like, and he could have gotten shot to death. We know that that's what happens when people call the cops on black people. Mm-hmm. <sighs> um, yeah. So that's, that's, that's where things are right now. There's protests, there's rioting, looting, whatever. I don't care about that. Um, honestly, because it's just, how things wind up going when people have lost all hope that the system can be fixed. You know, what's interesting. Do you recall that? I don't want to drag this out, but do you recall <laughs> that, um, hundred humans episode we saw where they uh-huh. were doing the shooting range where they would have a oh, white yeah. man versus a black man pop out. And every time people would choose the black man people, to shoot at, some people saw the results of that. And he would have a coffee a cup bit. in his hand or something. And, uh-huh. and they would shoot him over the guy that had the gun with the, the white guy with the gun. Yeah. Uh, and even the even the the woman that was African American, she shot the black guy. Mm-hmm. She's talking about a show called Hundred Humans, One Hundred Humans on Netflix. And scientifically speaking, a hundred people isn't enough to really draw right. you know, true conclusions. But some and sometimes the show was just funny. But sometimes you saw some shit that really makes you think about how we how our race, brains, right? how our brains work. Even and- people that are not racist that yeah. Like I mean, that could have been black. me. I don't fucking know. I don't. I don't think I'm racist, and I certainly don't want to be racist. But it, then you find out like what happens when you th- when you're under pressure and something's mm-hmm. on the line, and that could be me. That could be you. That could be any of us. Mm-hmm. And that sucks. So right. like we need we need to generational our change. Thinking. Yeah, it all it all needs to change from the ground up. Um, but yeah. part of the problem is, is that's what we see on the news. That's what, mm-hmm. you know, that's what has been broadcast. You see it on the news now. Lives. You get on Twitter, you see videos from real people that show so many awful things happening out there in the middle of these protests. And they do happen. And and there there are also police officers being attacked. That happens too. But you only see one side of that on the news. You hear about looting and rioting, and then you see that a couple cops have gotten killed. But you don't see the all the protesters that have been beaten senseless and put in the hospital and arrested for no reason. <sighs> Shot, killed. I mean, with rubber bullets. You can kill someone with a rubber bullet. Oh, yeah. Turns out. Like, mm-hmm. There was that know. media guy that got shot right in the neck. It could have easily children. gone through there. Uh, there's been children, pregnant people, like mm-hmm. just there's but, no mercy. You know, out it's there all right now. a big problem. The the biggest problem is is that police are there to control. And right. when they lose control, they don't know what to do. And there's only one thing that they know how to do, and that's violence. violence. Right. What do you do? How do you control a crowd when they've started looting? I think what we need to do maybe soon is an episode about that. Like, what's the what's the right thing? To what's do? the right answer? Because there's a lot of different theories about how to reform the system, including the possible answer of the system's fine, which it definitely isn't. But some people think that. Mm. Some people think you should just abolish the police altogether. Uh, so there's a lot of different, you can't do that. <laughs> well, you can, you need somebody to respond when there's a woman being beaten to death right. by well, her let, husband. Let's do, let's do our research. Cause I don't want to speak out of turn. I sort of have some ideas of what that proposal means, but mm-hmm. I don't want to go into that now when I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, so yeah, we, right. we should talk about that sometime soon. In the meantime, well, we did, in- we did record some fun stuff because that's kind of what we do. And we want to hopefully have fun with you guys. So, uh, that's it for now, but just, you know, we're out there, we're watching, we're listening, we're on Twitter. If you want to know how I feel about all this, just go look at my Twitter at pot of thrones. I don't think Jennifer's tweeted that much, but I've been I don't because it makes me so anxious to look at that yeah, all the time. It's upsetting. I can't, I have a hard time looking away from it. I, uh, I did for a long time. And then finally I had to step back and say, just no more. Yeah. So, you know, Come join the conversation if you like. I'd love to hear your thoughts on everything. Uh, if you're listening to the show, we love you. So it doesn't matter what color you are. We're here for you. Um, and go watch The Witcher if you haven't done that yet. Or watch it again because what we're about to do was a lot of fun to go back through the show. It's pretty it awesome. It was, yes. Watch it a second time around. is much better. Yeah, really is. And that said. 
every episode. What? Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> that means that. And that's who mm-hmm. they're talking about. Yeah. All so, right. Enjoy. Uh, yep. On with the show. Welcome back to Pod of Thrones. I'm Jeff. I'm Jennifer. And joining us today once again is Lord Master Kevin. 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 Hey guys, how's it going? Great. It's going all right. Uh, we are living in interesting times, to say the very least. But yep. uh, today we're going to practice the fine art of escapism. Right. Yes. We're going to take sure. our minds off of the craziness in the world. And uh, since we're out of Game of Thrones, we're out of Westworld, we got to turn to look at other things. And what we chose based on our discussion last week was The Witcher. The Witcher. Yep. <clears throat> Get out of here, Witcher. <laughs> we don't want you. I love it. I love the way they treat him. In fact, we're going to have to have a conversation about that. So uh, today we're going to start with the very first episode of The Witcher available on Netflix, Witcher Season 1, Episode 1, The End's Beginning. Shall we hop to it? Yeah. All right. Uh, Okay, so this follows the story of Geralt of Rivia, who uh, we've heard of from video games. Kevin, did you say you've played The Witcher video games? I only played number three. Number three, okay. But not the original or number two? No. All right. And the books? Never read them. All right. And I I will admit, I kind of just plain old forgot. It wasn't even a time thing. I just forgot to listen to the audiobooks. Um, So I got to get back to that. I got to keep it on my to-do list. Uh, But let's let's talk about Geralt. So uh, the the story opens. We see a a calm lake and a deer peacefully grazing. Uh, And then bursting out of the water is this big, strong, muscly dude with white hair and funky eyes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Uh, and he is fighting something called a Kikimora, which is a really cute name. It sure is. It sounds so adorable. Yeah. Like a, like a gizmo. Yeah, we could get a pet Kikimora in like maybe Little Tokyo or something. Maybe. But not this one. Uh, this is a giant insect monster. So we got that. Uh, okay. So uh, a couple things I noted. He's got these black eye. His eyes are all black, like something out of the X-Files. Right. But he's so- got like. The yeah. vein thing coming out of his eyes. Uh, I don't know if you have seen Into the Badlands, Kevin. Oh, yeah, that's right. But it's the same exact makeup. I was just going to look up the Is makeup it? artist for that and see if it was the same. But it's pretty, you know, generic and easy makeup to do. It's well, the black, the black veins, sure. Into the Badlands. Can you do eye black without computers? Like, can you make your entire eye black? I think you like can, but lens? it's painful. Yeah, there's there's co- it's got to be uncomfortable. There's contact right? lenses that do that. Oh. Right. I, I, I don't think you could wear them for long term, like a lot. I think it would be bad for your eyes. I mean, your eye Probably. couldn't breathe at all. No oxygen. I don't know. Anyway, he's got this cool black eye thing going on. They don't explain that. And they, as far as I can think of. So we haven't talked about this before we started the recap, but this is our second run through the show. And we're kind of hoping that you guys have seen it too and are ready to follow along. Or if you haven't watched the show yet. Now is your time to start, and we'll take you through episode by episode. But, Goes by fast. But if you if you haven't seen it before, there are multiple timelines in this show. There's a lot of funny stuff going on, and we're trying to catch some of this stuff on our rewatch and get a better understanding of how the show works. That's yeah. kind of what we're looking it for. It was a here. bit of a whirlwind the first time around. Yeah. And there were yeah. a lot of questions the first time around. Mm-hmm. And then the first the season ends, and you're like, okay, certain things make sense now, but I'm confused anyway. And now it just... In this first episode, just in the first episode, there were things where I was like, oh, my God, this explains so many things I was confused about. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Right. So uh, you, later on, you actually see him 
what he does to make his eyes black and stuff like that. Not in this episode, but in an episode right. where he's fighting something else. Yes. So, yes. So uh, it's, it's potions. It's potions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it takes potions. The Steroids. potion thing. Really? It seems to make Steroids. him stronger faster right like it's a performance enhancing potion it would definitely be illegal in the nfl but maybe not major league baseball um <laughs> well, i'm gonna guess that the one he took the potion he took was either like cat's eye or something maybe not something to make him see better underwater well and water breathing maybe i mean mm. although he's superhuman well, he, has he has different right. what he has one that helps him he has ones that can help him see with low light and, and mm-hmm. you know survive survive better so Maybe something like that. Mm-hmm. Tell, tell me this based on what you know of the world lore, and I hope to dive deeper into this eventually, but those potions can't be good for you, right? I mean, the, no. bla- the black and, vein thing, like that seems like it comes with a cost. Yeah. yeah. Probably addictive too. Do they, is that a thing in the game though? <laughs> it is. It is. Okay. All right. All right. Just um, I mean, it's just each one of them does a little bit different things. Like mm-hmm. um, it may, you know, help you with stamina or, you know, those things. So, but to put it into the world that we're looking in, it's probably something like the cat sight. So it can like, actually that one grants t- sight, like total darkness, but something to help, um, you know, see, cause you're underwater. Yep. 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 And, it's and hard to see underwater. After a lengthy fight and almost drowning, you would think uh, he does manage to kill the Kikimura, a deer. The deer gets injured during the oh, fight. Wait. Yes. Okay. So one more note about the Kikimura. Yes. Looks just like the behemoth Wendigo, doesn't it? <laughs> the Wendigo Colossus from Fallout oh, yeah, 76. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, a little bit in the face, yep. the face area. Yeah, mm-hmm. I could see that. All things are come back to Fallout, Kevin. You still need to come play with us. Uh, I just wanted to make a note of the deer because they do kind of set up the character. It, it's, I think it's pretty smart writing. Like here's this, they they get us right into the action. He's a fighter. Yeah. He's strong, not indestructible necessarily, but he manages to pull it through and just just delivers a savage killing blow to this thing. And then he sees the deer, and you can see some regret. Like he's kind of sad for the deer. He mm-hmm. winds up eating the deer. But you, yes. but you that's feel one of like my favorite parts of the episode. The ben- line later on, <laughs> I'm full. <Venison>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, I don't want any breakfast. Venison for breakfast. Yeah, like, oh, he ate the deer. <laughs> he ate the deer, but 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 you know, he killed it. You know, for cleanly. He he made sure it didn't suffer anymore, mm-hmm. and, I, and I think that's a great way to set up the character. Like he's a badass with a heart, right? Yeah. We also yeah. meet Roach the horse. Mention- oh yes. Right after he kills a deer and it goes to the like the title card for the Witcher, mm-hmm. the the first symbol you see a symbol and if you pay attention to each episode those symbols change. Oh shit, you're right. So I first, did not. The first symbol shown is the solar eclipse of the Black Sun. So that that reference um, in which uh, Renfrey was born. Oh born under yes, the black, I've got some stuff sun. about the Black Sun too, sir. I got some stuff. So so we we should note that these books were written in Polish. The original author, who, yeah. of course, his name I don't have in front of me and could not possibly pronounce. Um, I couldn't. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I, I guess I could figure that out eventually. But uh, this is written in Polish. And so they translated the names that were translatable, like Roach, for instance, is called a Polish word. And the Polish word translates to Roach. But it's not, as I looked up, cockroach. Uh, apparently, Roach is also a kind of fish. So he named his horse after a fish? Well, that's better than a cockroach, but yes. <laughs> okay. But I was, I'm glad to settle that mystery. Cause we were like the whole time. It's like his horse's name is Roach. What the fuck kind of name is that? It doesn't seem like a nice name, right? Nice name, right? It's not a respectful name, but if it's a, if it's a fish that he likes, then I guess that's better. Um, well, that's like naming your horse carp or <laughs> I don't know, perch. Well, I do. I do want to note. That he does call all of his horses Roach. Oh, oh, see, okay, I, okay. So now that's the, that's other news. Witcher's author's name. Oh, here we go. Go for it, babe. Andrzej. Uh huh. Sapkowski. Sapkowski's the easy bar. It's the first name. That's the hard mm-hmm. bar. Andrzej. <laughs> I'm sure there's some kind of um, like I don't know some different pronunciation of those. I feel bad. I know Letters. I've got some Polish in my heritage somewhere. I should be able to just naturally pronounce these words, but I, I, can't, I can't, and I'm sorry. Please forgive me. 
Uh, okay, so that was our introduction to Geralt of Rivia. He uh, goes to a town, enters a tavern, and everybody instantly knows that if a guy walks in with white hair, he doesn't belong here, and everybody shuts up as he walks into the tavern. Why? <laughs> right. Yeah, and it kind of shows you... It's a, it's a great introduction to character, because it probably shows you right away how witches are treated. Now, why? That's a good question. I he hope helps. to get that out of the there, books. Because, well, I mean, you learn later on that witches have to go through trials, and I mean, they're they're okay. taken from their parents at young age. Mm-hmm. And, you know, yes, um, a lot of them die. They in the should process, feel bad. So they, they're just people should but feel they're mutants, and and <laughs> and they're treated differently because everyone is treated differently. I mean, you see it in um, a lot of the episodes where they're treating the elf differently, and they're treating the dwarves differently, and they're treating so it's you know, raci- it's really racism. Yeah, you know, maybe this show actually is appropriate to watch in this particular time in our lives because, yeah, you're right. Everything is based off of we're normal white folk with normal shaped ears and normal hair Mm -hmm. (laughs) and normal eyes. And everyone else is an abomination. I mean, even what we see of the, you know, the sorcerers later, like the way these super powerful women are treated by royal courts and others is just like dogs at times. Uh, I mean, though, you get it in the second episode, too, where, um, you know, you meet the new character. And we can wait till the second episode to talk about that. But she's treated really badly. Right. Because she's different. Because she's different. Yeah. Boy, this world sucks. I hope the Witcher can clean it up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. So the, he gets into the tavern. And instantly, it's like right out of Star Wars, like the cantina, except instead of a robot, it's a man. And we don't want your kind here, Witcher. Um, they hate mutants. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess or it's very really X-Men. odd. Right? It's, it's so many things. <sighs> All right. Uh, and we meet Renfri, who stops these very Renfrey. over now. OK, so here's my question. So Renfri's men start okay. threatening Geralt right away. And uh-huh. it's one thing if you don't want him around, if you're uncomfortable because you know that he's a killer of monsters and that's weird. And he probably smells terrible. Like there's all those different things. But these guys immediately threaten to kill him. Are th- why? And I'm sure they're used to it, but I think only like Rinfrey steps in and makes them stop because she needs him. But why? She realizes it's her chance. It's just her chance to kill um, Stregobor. Well, yeah. so she's there to kill him, and she realizes she doesn't need to do it if she can get the Witcher to do it for her. So she shuts her men up. They look confused, like why she's doing it. I think that's why. Totally. I get all of that. But it's, my question is. She plans right away to use them. No, I get I get all of that, but he didn't need saving. He was never in danger in the first place. Like he and we see it, he can massacre all of these guys with barely any effort. But knowing what witchers do for a living, why would people start immediately threatening to just take him out if he doesn't leave? Well, well, you got to realize that until this point, witchers would leave and stuff like that and and you you'll you'll hear more later when you know he does what he does at the end and what what they what they do to him. Yeah, so, yeah. That I, follows him. That follows him. What, what happens in this episode follows him for the rest of his, you know, witching life. I get it. I get it. I just, I, I would not intentionally antagonize a superhuman killing machine. Like that well, just doesn't get, make any sense. People get, um, you know, drunk, brave, and <laughs> brave in groups. So a drunk, bunch of them yeah. wanted him. They, they don't think they you know that he can do what he can do. Yeah, and they probably wanted to live up, you know, mm. bragging rights forever about how they killed a witcher. Maybe if they saw what he had to do to kill the Kikimora, they'd right. be like, oh, yeah, we shouldn't fuck with this guy. Mm-hmm. But since he works alone, he's just like he comes in and he's got Kikimora parts strapped to a horse. That's not the same effect. Yeah, really, but, it's not. In which case, they just hate him because he's a mutant. Ah, they're terrible people. Terrible people. Okay. So anyway, we meet Renfrey. She stops these guys from threatening him. Great. Uh, okay. They talk for a little bit. They eat. They drink. Uh, and then we meet Marilka, who is a teenager, mm-hmm. I'd say. And she uh, is the daughter of the alderman, but apparently there's no value in this Kikimura after all. Uh, so she takes him to Master Irian, who needs work. Wait. I wanted to, I wanted to yes. point out something there. Go for it. The reason there was no value is, is because they were looking for a gravier. And it was a uh, Kiki Mora that he killed, but I think he was willing to like just trade it in because he didn't think that people would know the difference. 
Well, she, okay. she knew yeah. the difference. Right. Yeah. Most people would not know the difference, though, but she did. Hmm. And you could realize that she knows a lot about moths because she, she asked about three others, the succubus, the striga, and the mm. werewolf. She wants to be a witcher. I think at, yeah. I think at all points we learned. She also asked about a she-wolf when he said that wasn't that wasn't a real thing. Right. But I think at um, some point we see all three of those monsters, not in this episode, but before the end of the season. I was going to mm-hmm. say, I know we see a striga. Do we see? We see a succubus. Do we see a werewolf? I don't remember seeing a werewolf I don't remember. in the season, I haven't, uh, but I, I'm I sure we, we will. At one point. If we don't in yeah. season one, I'm sure we will. Yeah, I don't. I, don't I quite thought remember. perhaps Renfrey was a she wolf because he she was like in his presence when he said she wolf's not a thing, I believe. And also, she said silver hurts uh. her. Well, she does. Yeah. But wow. I, is she a monster? Is she not? That's going to be a debate for the ages, I guess. Um, Right. Okay. So th- she takes him to Master Area, and we we do learn that girls can't be witchers, as Jennifer was pointing out. She right. talked about how she'd be interested in that. So that's a little more just subtle world building in the background. They're shitty to women right. too, not just minorities. Uh, <laughs> it's a great and, world. And I want to. We've just watched what fifteen minutes, and how long do you think we've been to the show? Ten, twelve, thirteen minutes. Yeah. <laughs> what do you that's the first time you hear his name the first time you hear his name too oh sure <laughs> sure although where he's from and the girls can yeah mm-hmm. i don't know that that this show thought we had to put that out there so quickly since it's a pretty famous well genre. i mean there's a couple times i mean a couple times they do this um actually they do it throughout the whole entire show because i make notes of it when i write when i watch the new show i kind of write down names of people and i just want to like when i hear them um they don't mention they never call siri siri like until like near the end She's always Princess Cirilla or Cirilla the entire time. Mm. You never hear Yaskir's name until later on. And Yennefer waits until halfway through second episode to say her name. It's just, mm. right. <laughs> just don't give names. Right. That's reason. true. Mm-hmm. 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 You're right. I think some of that is to have the mystery because I know if you play the games, you've met Yennefer, you fucked Yennefer on a stuffed unicorn. All sorts of exciting <laughs> things can happen. I've seen the videos. Um, but to have her start out misshapen, that might not be something that everybody who's only played the video games would be prepared for. So they might not realize who she is at first. And then you at least have a little bit of like, oh, shit, you know, like a stinger on the end there. Well, yeah. I didn't know anything about the storyline at all. Yeah, well, we, yeah. we can definitely talk about that in season in episode two, because there's a bunch about that that I, I know. OK, well, we will definitely have to do that. All right, let's continue with episode one. All right. Um, so we get to a tower. It turns out that it's not some dude named Eerie and he's been dead for 200 years and we meet a character named Stregobor, right? So he is a right. sorcerer. Uh, he's hiding, sorcerer. Yep. he's hiding in this tower with a bunch of illusory, illusionary. What's the right yep, word? Illusions. There? Uh, naked women. So mm-hmm. that's cool. Illusionary uh, is the word. Illusionary, not illusory. I don't know. Uh, Maybe they're both good. Anyway, he also naked women that don't he exist. Also introduced us. He introduced us to the main theme of the episode and the main theme of the series, or at least season one. And that's the main episode of this. This episode is uh, the greater evil, and then the main uh, the main the theme lesser, of like the whole entire evil. series is well lesser greater. Evil. What, oh, what sure. is the greatest evil? You know, <laughs> you're, yeah. All right. And but, the series is that is that is of destiny. They probably say destiny twenty seven times. It's, it's, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah. In this episode alone. Well, in, the, in this episode, is, <laughs> oh no, this episode is not, okay, okay, I'm sorry. I thought this episode was called The Lesser Evil, even though I already said it, it's called The End's Beginning, but it's based on the yeah. original short story, which is called The Lesser Evil, so you nailed uh, it there. The first one was the last, oh, no, you're right, you're right. <laughs> the lesser evil, yeah. Um, okay, so Stregobor needs help killing Renfrey, she is the apparently the worst kind of monster, um, according to him. And then this goes into something called The Curse of the Black Sun. So why don't you, you mentioned it first. So why don't you start it off? Uh, what do you, what do you know about the curse of the black sun? Well, it was, um, the, the, what was it? 60 women. Was it 60? Yes. Born under the, born under the eclipse. Um, and so he would go out and find them and lock them into towers and that, and then he said they'd all die. And then he'd do autopsy. He found magic in them. And Renfrey was the last one. Mm -hmm. So, it's important that you listen to the story because some of the time jumps 
that you hear, you mm-hmm. kind of get understanding later on. And I'll bring it up later when, when during series story, because oh yeah, because of what's going on. But <laughs> that comes up during <laughs> series story. You're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah the yeah, no, knowing now, like the second yeah. viewing. I'm telling you, if you've watched this show and only watched it once, watch it with us a second time. It is definitely worth it. Um, right. So I mean, all of them are dead, but Renfrey now. And so Renfrey was the last one, but he was having trouble killing her, as he had explained. Um, so. Yeah, and I, and I do want to talk a little bit about this prophecy. It was 60 women wearing gold crowns who will fill the river valleys with blood. But what they were hearkening was supposed to be the return of Lidit, mm-hmm. a demoness devil. who would destroy the world of men. Uh, but what's I, I find really interesting about that, with I'm sure this guy, uh, Andres, whatever his name is, uh, I'm sure he must have been drawing off this, was the biblical the biblical figure of Lilith, which, um, and this is something I've always remembered from, from Sunday school. Uh, she was, uh, she was Adam's first wife. It's a really confusing thing. It's sort of, it's very nitpicky in terms of what the Torah says in the first lines of Genesis, but it was interpreted at one point that woman was created twice and Eve was number two. The first one was Lilith. She was the first woman and she had a will of her own. She was created by God, on her own, not out of a rib from Adam's body. And she didn't feel that subservience to him that uh, came to be (laughs) expected out of women, you know, for hundreds or thousands of years. Um, And she, well, that name comes up in a bunch of stories. Lilith. Well, I think that I think it originated out of, out of the old Testament, right? Originated in the Bible. Um, But not, it wasn't, she wasn't mentioned in the old Testament, but she came up in scripture later on. And she was, either a murderer that killed babies in their cribs uh, or she was also theoretically the world's first feminist because she was like, sorry, Adam, I'm not going to do everything you tell me to do. I'm out. And she became sort of an immortal demonic figure, um, but also could be respected in some circles. Uh, She is a feminist icon if, if you look at it the right way. So the thought that this Lilith is, going to end the world of men and going to do so on the backs of 60 women wearing gold crowns. I mean, it really sounds like Stregobor and his friends are trying to prevent some mass feminist revolution. Honestly. I mean, that's, that's what it sounds like to me is like, we can't have Lilith come back because well, she's going to fuck up our patriarchy. What? They also don't want to die. Well, and they don't want to die. Of course who does, but, uh, I just, I don't know. I thought the whole thing was really interesting in that we're sort of mixing our mythologies here. Cause I don't think this world is earth. It doesn't seem like it could be really. Um, but Lilith is, is a, is a figure that's come up in a lot of different stuff, but it started in the Torah and the, the Talmudic, uh, interpretations of the Torah. So I just love that story. And she's also, um, in the True Blood series, you guys ever watch that? She is the prognator. Uh, prognator. She's the first Progenitor? vampire of the race. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, is she? I didn't. I guess we didn't get far yeah. enough into True Blood. We watched a few seasons. No, we of did. It. Yeah, did. She's the did last season. She's the last season. Well, huh. maybe the season before the last. She's the big baddie in that one. Maybe I'm remembering the books. I read the books. In uh, other mythologies or fiction, fictional works, especially the really popular stuff from White Wolf Games, the original progenitor vampire was Cain, Adam and Eve's son. Mm-hmm. So uh, people love taking this shit from like the very first uh, stories. Not really the first stories, but some of the first stories. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so anyway, let's move on from that. That's why uh, oh, yeah, there was so much stuff, though. Stragobor said some really fucked up things. It wasn't just that he locked him in the tower, but he was performing autopsies and finding their internal yeah, mutations. Autopsy. Internal mutations. Yeah. Right. Which is what, like, what does that mean? Yeah. How did you know to lock them up in the first place, you sick fuck? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, they were born. Un- they were born under the black sun. There were princesses born sure, under the black yeah. sun. Women, princesses, right. Princesses born on that day. Mm-hmm. Still. Mm. But mm. he said that Renfri, is, a- kill, she kills and hurts things just to do, just for pleasure. Yeah. He told the whole story Does about her she seem her like that? Up. We don't know. What about? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, and she's resistant to magic. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's her, maybe one of her mutations. I do, I do have... I do have an astrology thing outside of here that is kind of kind of amusing. It is said that in the universe that not many places can have holy eclipse. 
Like, Earth is only, like, one of them. Like, if we were a tourist destination for aliens, it would be to come see eclipses because you don't get them on many planets. Mm. Really? So <laughs> for them to have one there is kind of mm. cool. It's got to be something about the size of our moon and our proximity to the sun. Yeah, I guess yep, it, it, would, exactly it, is. it would that's have exactly to line up is. perfectly. Yeah. Yeah, that's yep. an interesting point. Hmm. Yep. Hmm. That's why people have always thought they were magical in usually a bad way. I mean, that's that's in plenty of yeah. mythologies, not just this, you know, extra made up stuff. Uh, so I yeah. guess uh, Renfrey is the last of Lilith's women. So she has to be eliminated. And even though killing her sucks, he says it's the lesser evil. That's what we were all coming to. Uh, and what does Geralt say? He says, if I have to choose between one evil and another, then I prefer not to choose at all. And Stregobor said. Hmm, poor Stregobor. Boo-hoo. Um, all right, so he leaves. Fine, he's out in the woods. Renfrew catches up and says, you know, the whole thing about stabbing this dude in the head with a with a brooch, like, that's not true. That guy raped me and robbed me, and I had to run off and then go into hiding. And Stregobor's just a shithead. And she's going to kill Stregobor for stealing her life. Can anyone blame her for that? No. That's assuming no. Stregobor was lying. I do want to say one thing, though. I do want to say one thing, because I don't want you getting a bunch of angry emails. Mm. They actually call her Lilith without the H at the end, but you know, know. we know what they're meaning. No, no, no. They do say Lilith in the show, but, and I even looked it up and uh, I just wanted to point that out. I just wanted to point it out. We know it's Lilith, but you know, in the, in the Witcher (laughs) wiki, obviously referencing something in the Witcher wiki, it was Lilith or Lilith. So I don't know if somewhere in the books, maybe it, it comes up as Lilith at some point, but yeah, in the show, they say Lilith. Totally cool with that. I was just saying it's one to point it out that we very, know, we know that we just <laughs> very similar to, to ancient Jewish myth. Yeah. All right. uh, okay. Oh. So is Stregobor a liar? Is he not? Is she a monster? Who knows? Um, so she wants Geralt to kill Stregobor. So now everybody wants Geralt for something. Great. Uh, she talks about how she was a princess and could have done so many things. And I bet you Kevin has a note on what I'm about to say. She, yep. she, <laughs> you want, why don't you take it away, Kevin? I I know what right, I know well, what you've got written down. Well, I mean, it's one of the hard things about this is I mean, it really isn't that hard because like it doesn't matter until it ca- until time catches up. But one, <laughs> they're taking places in two different time time periods, right? So um, there are hints thrown throughout each episode, let you know they're in different time periods. Mm-hmm. In this episode, we learn uh, what you're talking about. We learn that um, at this point. Um, I think Renfrey says it to her. Yep. She says to her, she says, Queen Calanthe of Centra, she just won her first battle at Horchbuzz. Uh, and she's in, and so we know that she's out there doing this. Queen Calanthe is doing this, doing this. And then, you know, we haven't got to the point yet with Suri, but Suri is Queen Calanthe's granddaughter. Yep. So we know that all this time has passed because Siri is there as her granddaughter. And she mentions it to her. When she says, when you were my age, you won your first battle. So you understand that time has passed if you put those two together right then and there. Yep. So, And I would put none of that together on the first watch. Like until we got to the end of the show <laughs> so, and it was obvious that there were two timelines. But then we didn't go back and rewatch all this shit. So catching all this stuff now again is well, a lot I can of fun. Tell you, I can tell you the exact quotes that I wrote them down for you. Okay. When you're with Siri, it says, if we fall to Novgorod, your granddaughter will rule, it says to her. And then the queen calls Siri a child. And Siri says, when you were my age, you had won your first battle already at Hutzpah. And Siri is 14, mm-hmm. telling us when, when Queen Calanthe was 14, she won her first battle. And then when Renfrey's talking, she says, Queen Calanthe of Centred, she just won her first battle. So right then you realize, wait a minute. Siri was talking about something that happened in the past. Mm-hmm. Renfrey's talking about something that just happened. All right. Now let me blow your mind. Are you ready for some mind blowers? Okay. So yes. uh, I, I didn't do like the research was not hard. It was just clicking on a lot of shit. But if you go to Witcher Netflix.com, they do have a timeline of the mm-hmm. show and it's pretty amazing how things work in this weird ass world. Uh, so let's just talk about a little bit here. The battle of Hotch buzz. So Geralt was born in the year 1160 on their calendar. And Calanthe, the queen, uh, was born in the year 1216. So uh, the Battle of Hotchbuzz was in 1231. So that had just happened in the same year as this episode. Uh, and at that point in time, Geralt is 71 years old. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he looks good. And how old is 
Oh, and uh, if we Renfrey. do the math on that, I, I should have done it before. But Calanthe. Renfrey isn't. Is, well, I think Renfrey's normal. Right. right. So he's like. Calanthe's only 14. Calanthe's only 14 at that time when he's 71. <laughs> Yeah, she, well, Calanthe is either like fourteen or maybe fifteen, depending on when her birthday is. But yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. it's the, it's yeah. up to fifteen years of difference between Calanthe's birth and the Battle of Hotchbuzz. But Geralt is seventy one at that point. Gross. So that man. I think Renfrey's works. a little bit older than Calanthe. Than Calanthe, I think Renfrey's probably closer to twenty. Oh, I'm I really think she's not. in oh, her twenties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah. she was not a fourteen year old girl. No, they could she's not old have enough. Done she's consent age. I'm just yeah. still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was definitely the age of consent. Although in this world, I mean, we'll talk a little bit more about Calanthe's age later because there's no point in doing that now. But people oh, fuck right. young in, in this world. world. I people remember. People fuck young. Mm. Okay. But Renfrey's not 14, and that's a happy thing. Okay. So uh, where were we? Where were we? Uh, so we get that big timeline clue. All right. We're at so, the river. So um, Geralt uh, has also been treated like a monster. He doesn't want to kill all the shitty humans because then he'd be the monster they say he is. He makes a fair point there. Uh, he suggests that Renfrey leaves Blaviken and her quest for revenge behind so she can finally live. It's not bad advice, but Strekabor is also kind of a problem being almost immortal himself and all. And a dick. And definitely a dick. Um, all right. So Geralt leaves. He's talking to Roach. He's talking about how he was trained not to bring, a, not to be a law bringer. Basically. Uh, he was telling a story. He's just there to work for coin and to kill monsters. Renfrey catches up to him again. She's wait, trying wait, to, wait, yes. I want you to stop for a second. <laughs> Please stop. I me. want to, I want to point out that, that he talks about the first monster he killed and it turns out that it wasn't an actual monster. It was a human. Oh yes. That's right. That's right. Yeah, right. I think mm-hmm. that was pretty poignant to kind of explain what type of character Geralt, uh, Geralt was. You and know? It, it still he, bothers him. He considered, yeah, it still bothers him. Because even after he saved the girl, the girl turned and ran. <laughs> That's right. Mm-hmm. So. That's right. Or threw up and then passed out or something like that. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she didn't take it well, the saving. And he doesn't look that fucked up, right? He's I mean, he has white hot. hair and cool eyes. Right. <sighs> People are so stupid. Well, I totally believe it because this, you know. I mean, they must have heard stories about witchers being like crazy rapists or something. They're the real monsters. Uh, or they're just as bad as the monsters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. So Maybe he, some of them were. Hmm? Maybe some of them were. Maybe yeah. Geralt's different. Yeah. Yeah. He could be the one good witcher. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, make some parallels to what's going on. All right. I won't, I won't, I won't. Uh, okay. <laughs> so Renfrey catches up to him again. She's trying to get him to pick a side. He says he doesn't pick sides. He just kills monsters. And she says she's going to leave Blaviken for good. And then they fuck. They made so love. Cool. What? Nothing. Do you think it was making love? Well, it was sensual. All right. I don't know. I don't think they don't have like a deep connection though. They just want to, they just want to get their. He seems they, to have a deep connection out. with every woman. He fucks <laughs> somehow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Perceptive of you to notice that mm-hmm. this big hunky man, mm-hmm. that he automatically has a deep connection with everyone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean in a different way, in okay. a witcher way. Okay. Uh, <laughs> So Geralt has a dream after, you know, he's, he's Is been fucked. Dream? He came, so he's, he's right, unconscious he's useless now. now. Yeah. Renfrey gets away. She slips off in the night. He has a dream that includes Renfrey making a bunch of prophecies. She talks about blood all over him in the town square and being stoned. And, See, I and think she was like talker. Like, it, do you think she that was, was during the lovemaking? I feel like she was, I, she, she was cursing him. Right. Was it was like a spell. Oh. <laughs> oh shit. I didn't even think of that. Mm hmm. No, but yeah. some of it's prophecy because she said you will try to outrun the girl in the woods, but you cannot. That was the last part of her thing, and that had nothing to do with what was going to happen to Blaviken. Hmm. That's true. I think she was talking about herself. I think she was talking about herself when she said that. Really? You don't think she was she's talking the about the girl Siri? in the woods that she's, she's making love with? Right. Well, he. I'm sure he <laughs> I mean, thought it was that. It might be prophecy. That 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 would make sense from our viewer point of view as well. I don't think she knows like when she's saying that whether or not she said it in a dream or wherever. I don't think she knows what that meant. You know? Maybe not. Well, that's the problem with prophecy. Maybe. Sometimes you just say things and you don't know. Right. You just blabber out in tongues or whatever. And Well, and some of it could be like, again, maybe Stregobor isn't totally a bad guy. 
he says later, like, she can control people's minds. Maybe she was controlling Geralt. She was. Who the fuck knows? We'll never get answers. Uh, all right. So Geralt gets up and he's like, oh, shit, she, she's going to go do something stupid. So she, he goes into Blaviken. Sure enough, there's Renfri's men. And then we see what happens when Renfri's men try to kill Geralt. Like, he again, won them. I don't know why people would ever try it. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like <laughs> the first guy got stabbed really? in the face and then he twisted the blade and flung it out of the fa- like that dude. Oh, that's an awful way. And to then die. the next guy got his head chopped off. I'd rather have my head chopped off than what happened to the guy with this uh, stabbed in the face. Yeah. I promised my friend I would make a point about this when we talked about it. Um, that during this fight, they said that um, it was Blaviken was shot all in. It was shot in camera with no cuts using actual metal swords instead of props. Hmm. He says that Campbell talks about it in one of his docs he did while reading The Witcher while they played. They had they had to be super precise with their swings. They spent months practicing for that one scene since they wanted to be authentic. Neat. Wow. Well, it worked. It was yeah. It was pretty good <sighs> fight. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was bad. It was bloody. It was fast. Like Witcher's efficient in the way he kills people. I, I got to give him some good credit for that. Um, ugh, we we do see a little like uh, it was almost like Star Wars. He does like a force push. Right. This, but so he has mm-hmm. magic beyond potions. Mm-hmm. He can do other stuff. Yes. Um, yeah, he can he do he can do a couple of things. Yeah. And then Renfri shows up once all the men are dead. Renfri shows up. She has Marilka, the the teenage girl. Uh, he was going to do something to her with magic, whatever magic doesn't work on her, but she says silver does though. And then he says, silver is for monsters. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Mm -hmm. It is. All right. It is. No, he has two swords. He carries two swords. You see that. I can understand a world in which we have set the rules that these supernatural monsters cannot be harmed by normal metal weapons. You must use a silver weapon on them. I cannot understand a world where someone would say, a human would be like, silver works on me. And he'd be like, well, silver's only for monsters. The so silver could kill anybody. Like, if you have yeah. a sharpened right. silver blade, you could kill me right. with it. And I'm not, I think, a monster. Silver bullet. Silver right. bullets? Yeah, silver <laughs> bullets true. don't only kill werewolves. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. But the, the reason the Witcher uses a regular sword for people and silver sword for monsters is because silver swords are more expensive. Well, yeah. If they break. Because you're fighting over with armor and stuff like that. I then totally get that. You don't want to do it. So you use the regular sword for that reason. I get that. She was saying it to be, be a, be a, a hey, monster. Right. I am a monster. I'm a monster. Be, be I'm afraid monster, of me. I know. Mm-hmm. I know. You probably I just killed her with a regular sword. I, I <laughs> could he have, well, what did he kill her with? He killed, uh, she died from her own dagger. Yeah. So they have this big fight. Yeah. She gets in a few blows. She's a good fighter. I mm-hmm. like her. Mm-hmm. Um, right. She does. She does cut his leg. She does uh-huh. cut his leg, which is important to understand the timelines as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, you're right. Later, we see the same leg, and it's now a it's now a scar, and it is you know a hardened scar, so it's not just a mm-hmm. you know a fresh wound. Mm-hmm. Yep. But yep. that's later. You're right. That I'll bring it up a, when we. It's another timeline clue later. I I didn't pick up on that today, but when we watched that episode later, I'm sure I would have been like, oh, they're showing us the scar on his leg. Renfrey did that. Um, okay, yep. and, and she dies via throat slice with her own knife. Uh, which may have been silver, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, another answer we'll never get. But she she ends with the girl in the woods will be with you always. She is your destiny. Mm-hmm. So again, he could think that means her since he met her in the woods, but it doesn't. Yeah, I think that Renfrey is sort of like um, the Red Woman, the Red Witch, the Red Melisandre. Melisandre, yeah, she's one of the. She's a know. seer, right? Mm-hmm. And seers don't always know what they mean. They right. just say the words. Mm-hmm. It's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. So to finish off the Geralt stuff, uh, Stregobor finally comes down from his tower because he's a cowardly little bastard. And he finds Renfrey mm-hmm. dead. He wants to do an autopsy. And Geralt says, that's a step too far, motherfucker. Um, but there was a really interesting line from Stregobor. I don't know if you caught it, Kevin, but he says he needs to do the autopsy because her mutation helps her influence people, blah, blah, blah. And then he says, quote, we need to take it, unquote. Hmm. He wasn't saying we need to figure out what it is and study it. He said we need, we to, need take to take it. it. And I feel like that's a little thing that's going to come back someday. Did you catch on to that? What do you make of it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I did. I saw him say that. Hmm. But he hmm. was... I was more interested in the 
um, what's happening with Geralt there, where they're they're mad at him after he pretty much saved them. Right, assholes. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. if anything, Stregobor is the one controlling minds, because he just says a few words, and the whole crowd turns on Geralt. Maybe they were just waiting for the opportunity. Right, but it they want to like, kill witchers. It seemed like Stregobor was doing, like, some kind of silver tongue magic mm. thing, where... Right. Like he was, I feel like he was influencing them. Maybe he was influencing her yeah, men so in the is, beginning. Maybe. And yeah, Marilka too. This is too. where he gets his nickname. Who? Right. This is where he gets his nickname. Oh, the, the butcher, Darryl. the butcher of Blaviken. This is why he becomes the butcher of Blaviken. Right. It's one of those titles that you get to wear in any role playing game. You get a bunch of those. Mm-hmm. Butcher of Blaviken is just one of them. You have to hit start and then go to your menus and then choose which title you want to display. Uh, but they try stoning him, just like uh, Renfrey said. And Marilka even says, go and never come back. And Geralt does leave, but he keeps her brooch. Her brooch. Is her, it brooch right, or brooch? Which looks very much like the Hand of the King's yeah, lapel pin. <laughs> it right. Does. It's a little bigger. Yes. Bigger. A little bigger. Well, big enough to kill. Yeah, you could kill someone with that shit. Your rapist mm-hmm. with. All right, and that ends the the story of Geralt for episode one. Any other thoughts on that before we move to Siri? Mm. All right. No. So let's talk about Princess Cirilla, as Kevin says. She's known as Siri, and that's got to be a nightmare for anyone that has an Apple phone with Siri turned on. (laughs) Uh, All right, so we got Siri. She is gambling in the streets of Sintra. We don't know who she is at first, but we do because this is a rewatch. Um, She has to go to court for boring shit. You do see... Yes. Wait, you do see her. You do see her look over at the door, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Mm-hmm. That comes up in a later, later. episode. Uh, in later episode, you know, you, you see that Gerald is actually behind that door. Yep. Like he almost sees her. But he does not. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's just funny that they put that in early on, and it comes back later. I love those little. I love those little details when they happen. Me too. I was kind of thinking about that as I was watching it, but I didn't remember exactly why she was looking at that door. So that's that's on me, but good on you for remembering that. Uh, okay, yeah. so later on, there's a party. We have we meet uh, Queen Calanthe and King Iced, or Ist. Iced. 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 Uh, Calanthe is kind of all business for most of the time. Uh, they're at a party, and at the party, they're discussing possible war with a place called Nilfgaard that we don't know anything about. Uh, but right. sure enough, that same night, the scouts come back and say that Nilfgaard is on its way to Sintra, and they're well, there. I did want to mention another they're, thing. I'm sorry. You yes, Roman passed a bunch of stuff. I want to mention. <laughs> this sorry. brings up Queen Calanthe's daughter's betrothal during the feast. Yeah, the, the I guess program. so. Yeah, they, they mentioned that stuff, but we don't know anything Calls, about what, the daughter. What? Right, but it comes back later. But you realize right then that um, this, this is not her actually, mother. Uh, right. He's, uh, he says yeah. your daughter, mm-hmm. which is, wasn't the father of Suri's mother. So That is correct. Yeah. We actually see that at the feast. But he is a that just second husband. you know that this is actually right. Yeah, second husband. Mm-hmm. But he seems like a good guy. Like Siri actually likes him. That's nice. But they are they are grandparents, yep. and that was one of the ones where I, I wrote down like, "What the fuck? Are, are is everyone ageless in this goddamn world?" I wrote something like that down. Uh, <laughs> but but we'll, we'll, we'll learn the truth. Um, okay, so then we have. Uh, oh, but before they leave the party, and again, this is something I think will come back to haunt us or something. Uh, is uh, Ist says to Calanthe, "You should tell the girl." Right, and that's all he says. That could be we're going to war, but mm-hmm. she's going to find that out any second now anyway. Or it could be something else that they're going to show later. Uh, okay. So we have Sintra well, versus... Yes? We, we find out later what it was he was talking about. We well, find yeah. out what he was talking about. Oh, yeah. yeah right. We totally um, I wanted to say that she was dancing with a guy named... A, kid, a boy named Martin. Mm-hmm. Yes. She seemed to have fun yeah. after she went out there. Well, yeah, she did. She was having right, a good I'll time dancing. Martin later. I just wanted to later. I just wanted to mention that it was Martin that she was dancing with. All right. I mean, we see Martin again later in the episode, but maybe there's something more to his role that right. I'm not thinking of. Uh, so I'll let you fill that in. No, no. Later in the episode, we see Martin being killed by his mother. Yeah, mm. totally. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I wanted to mention that, 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 so they bring it back to him. Yeah, I'll be honest. I didn't take notes on most of that because it's just you know those things were happening. People were poisoning themselves. But but let's come back to that. Sintra versus Nilfgaard. Cool battle scene. Uh, I I had to write down big props for Ooh. the Ooh. armor designers because Calanthe is wearing real armor. It's not boobs. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's like an actual protective piece of armor. I love that. I love it when people are realistic. Uh, it was a good battle. But Sintra was losing. They were outnumbered. The reinforcements were supposed to be on a boat. They weren't coming. There was a storm or something. So they are losing the battle. And just as oh, they... F- yes? So the storm. Storm. There's no clue in this, but the storm was oh. obviously done by magic. Right. That was... Um, what's her name? Uh, magic lady? For- M- one of the Frangia? magic ladies. Fran- oh, yeah, yeah. Frangilla. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Angela, yeah. Yes, we wind up seeing yeah. that in later we episodes. Bitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she a bitch. Yeah. Uh, and Est goes down, he takes an arrow to the eye, uh, oh, shot awesome. by a guy we will come to know as Kahir, mm. if I'm saying that right. But he's got this weird fucking helmet on with like a bird coming out of it. <laughs> Again, <laughs> yes. they really have a hard time giving names about this because when Ist is killed with an arrow, that's the first time his name is said. Right. That's true. <laughs> Ist is dead. <laughs> that's true and we don't like get who? Kahir's name for a long time if ever right. actually I don't even know if they say it in the show but I took it off the wiki uh, Clanth goes berserk or something uh, we cut away we don't see what happens but she definitely gets injured uh, during the battle Siri and a guy named Mouse Sack right what? again another name they don't say till later on <laughs> they, say, they say it in this episode though but, but when you hear them say they it do. You're like, they do say this episode but not till later like he's been there the whole time you know he's been at the feast he's been with Siri talking to her true true <laughs> uh, Siri Mouse Sack and a guy named Laszlo who's like Siri's personal guard they're all hanging out they're being bored uh, but when she's complaining Mouse Sack says something to the effect of many years ago we used to lock little girls in towers so I consider right. that maybe a timeline clue. clue. Yeah, because he it was they, they because, mentioned because mm-hmm. Stregab- You remember Stregobor's story was set in Geralt's present time with Renfrew. right, right. right. And Renfrew was still alive. Mm-hmm. So when Mouse Sack is telling the story, all of them are dead now. So you know that Renfrew's been killed um, because this happens earlier in the episode before the Renfrew fight with Geralt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he says all the women are dead. Mm-hmm. So this is telling us that uh, both plots were spread out among the years. You know, he mm-hmm. he says many, many, many years ago when for. <laughs> You know, it was only 20 years for Renfrey, that type of thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, they talk about how Calanthe is Siri's grandmother. Maybe they hadn't mentioned it before this point. Maybe they had. I can't remember now. Uh, I think they call it is the, oh, gra- the they grandfather, had. but I don't know. It's just that's it. They, yeah. uh, I don't know. She's so young. Uh, Calanthe, badly injured. She gets home. I, a scene that felt very like Joffrey and Robert Baratheon ish to me, mm. like the whole dying. Like Joffrey was genuinely broken up when he saw Robert Baratheon dying on that demon. He was. Yeah. That was the one time where you're like, oh, Joffrey. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he would have been less of a monster if that hadn't happened, but it broke him. Uh, okay. So the battle is coming into the city. They followed Calanthe back. She wasn't far ahead of them. Uh, Mausak puts up a really cool barrier that will stop everything, but it requires his nonstop concentration, which is kind of a bummer. <laughs> right. Like it doesn't seem very sustainable. Yeah. <laughs> he wound up sustaining it for a number of hours. His arms have got to be so tired, right? And his like, brain. You just can't do it forever. You can't. And sure enough, it doesn't. Later that night, the barrier finally comes down. Oh, before. Right. Be- so. Be- yes. So I just wanted to say that. Um, when you see how powerful Mouse Sack is when he does the shield, because that's pretty, um, pretty hard thing to pretty, pretty hard yeah. thing to do. It's right, not to keep it up for that mm-hmm. long. Bodies, it's flaming long. arrows, everything they throw at it for hours. Yeah. yeah. The only problem yeah. seems to be that in all those so, hours, no one did anything to prepare like boiling oil or something, like something <laughs> you could do to throw down on the enemies once they finally get through the right. gates. They were just like, well, hold Mouse Sack's arms up. I we can do this forever. <laughs> Yeah, I think their plan was the the ships were going to come and we're going to, you know, uh, come from behind. They were oh, waiting. And they wouldn't have to worry about it. At the well, that didn't happen. Mm. Uh, okay, so just real quick now. So, Calanthe, I just want to say this. Uh, when Calanthe loses her battle and Sintra falls to Nilfgaard, she is 47. So not as old as you would have thought. I mm-hmm. just thought she was probably in her 60s or 70s, but she looked hot because no one ages yeah. in this world. But she's 47, so I guess people just fuck young. That's what I was saying. It had to be... Well, everybody fucks young. Yeah. I mean, she had to be 14. 
she could have, then she had probably could have had a kid and that kid could have had someone before. I mean, it, it doesn't take long. I mean, like in that time, it didn't right. really. I mean, once you lead an army to victory in battle, I think you're allowed to have a baby. Yeah. Yeah. Even if right. you're only 14. Yeah. yeah. Right. So Calanthe had a baby young and then Calanthe's daughter had a baby young. And now Siri is 13. According to the timelines I'm seeing, she was born in 1250 on the timeline I'm, and it is currently 1263 when, when, uh, uh Sintra yeah, falls. That's according to the Witcher I Netflix time. I was just guessing. Oh, yeah. Well, you were very close then. Good job. Yeah. All right. So let's finish this up. Uh, what happens next? Um, well, I wanted to, this is when the, the, the people in the tower decide to kill themselves instead of letting them be captured by Nilfgaard. Right. The well, Nilfgaard don't take prisoners. They, they say, they yeah, yeah, it sounds really bad. Like, I wouldn't want to be captured by Nilfgaard either if that's what it comes down to. Uh, but they do say something but else. Also, before. Yes. Before before she sends him out to give the poison, he mm-hmm. says she says to uh, Mil- M- Malsak, "He's in the gatekeep." Right. Um, who they're talking exactly. about is Geralt. We know they're talking about Geralt because we've seen it. You know, again, this is a rewatch. So Garrett is Geralt is in this castle locked up. Uh, so Malsak is going to cut him right. loose, and they think maybe he can save the day. Uh, while the other dude, who as far as I can tell never gets a name, goes to get a bunch of poison vials for all the people to drink. Um, Covering all their really, bases they there. Want, they just want him to take Siri away. They just want the, him to take Siri away. Who? That's all they really want. Oh, but he's gone. G- Geralt. Okay, yeah. Well, that's, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, yeah. But he's gone, yeah. He, Mousat comes back a few minutes later, says that he is gone. We know it's Geralt. Uh, so Siri has to leave. She's throwing a little hissy fit and screams, and it kind of shakes the world, but only a little bit. It doesn't seem like she knew she could power. do that. Yeah. But she has some kind of power. Right, that right. she doesn't know about. Is she a mutant? Because if so, it's very X-Men Banshee. I'm just saying, there's already a character that does that. <laughs> uh, or is yeah. she something else? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Yep. yep. Uh, She's but- just a loud talker. <laughs> I'm a loud talker. I wish I could do that. Uh, all right, so... <laughs> So, uh, Calanthe says, find Geralt of Rivia. He is your destiny. Laszlo, the guard, takes Siri away. Uh, Mausak and Calanthe exchange words about Siri's scream, and one of them says, it is why they came. Hmm. So this is all Someone about knows. Princess Cirilla. And how do Siri. they know? Yep. How do they know she has this power would be my first question. Right. And then also, what are they going to do with it <laughs> would be my second question. <gasps> I already well, know what they're going to do with it. I'm gonna guess. I, I'm gonna guess that it is probably the same way that Tasia knows about you know Jennifer in the second episode. Jennifer. They can just tell where the power is. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. What did I say Jennifer. I meant Jennifer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure, it's a common mistake. <laughs> well, but but yeah. If you if you kidnap, okay, so Siri is in her teens. You, it's not like if you stole her as a baby and raised her up as your own and turned her into this ultimate weapon that you can shake the world with. She's not going to help Nilfgaard on her own. Well, maybe but they what, think they can magic the, her, her into doing it. Maybe. Just like, I mean. But what if someone like Stregobor thinks that he can cut her open, figure out what's giving her that power, and take it and use it and give it to I mean, other people? It could be that, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you could give that to a whole army of people, Nilfgaard would be completely unstoppable. Sure. That's probably what he wants to do. I think we figured it out. Mm -hmm. Good job, team. Okay. Uh, (laughs) All right. So, Duke goes through, distributes poison to all the castle guests. Martin is among them. His dad was the guy that didn't take the poison and instead stabbed himself in the face. What a dumbass. (laughs) (laughs) I I would take the poison. I would take the fucking poison. He didn't want to be, like, labeled a pussy Ugh. That, if that's not yeah. toxic masculinity what is because dude right. there's an easy way out of this that you think he he thinks the nilf guards are gonna come around oh look at this guy he took the poison that guy whoever that guy was he should have watched the game of thrones episode where well many of them where dudes are drowning in their own blood because that does not look like the way to go and then that guy stabbed himself in the neck that is that is not okay yeah I protest. It didn't look like he died right away either. He was kind of like, oh, oh, yeah. oh. Well, of course he wouldn't <laughs> die right away. It's awful. Right. It's awful. Stop you yourself could, in the you face. You could hang yourself. You could do so many other things. You could jump out the window like Calanthe does in like the next scene. You could land so on your sword. 
on your that heart, would, you know, that, I don't know. On your heart, maybe that would still be pretty, pretty bad. All right. So Mausak and Laszlo get Siri, Siri out of the castle through a secret passage. Uh, and Calanthe looks, I, I wrote down Calanthe looks over the devastation of her city and pulls a Tommen. <laughs> womp, womp. Poor Tommen. Uh, just dives out the window. All right. <laughs> Mausak separates from the pack. We assume he's going to go kick some ass because he's such an awesome mage, uh, but we don't see him again for a while. Uh, and then Kahir shoots Laszlo, and the Laszlo and Siri fall off their escaping horse. And then she's running, running, running. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry. He actually gets her. He had Kahir, whatever his name yes. is, Kahir. He has Siri up on his horse. He's taking her away. Right, they're riding she away. She does a power scream, and then they all fall down. Mm-hmm. And then she does another power scream. And she cracks open the earth, and then a tower, just a random tower that just happens to be there. It was a big falls monolith over. like thing. Yeah. Quite a landmark. She just destroyed it. It falls into this crack she made and then splits open the entire earth, which I feel would probably destroy the city that's like 10 feet away. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so she screams really big, and then she gets away fleeing into the woods. She's the girl in yep. the woods. Mm-hmm. And at the point we've met Geralt he has no clue because it's like many many years away before she's even born <laughs> uh, but we'll talk about that in later episodes so that that was fun re-watching it and seeing how they're setting things up I really liked it I think I liked it better than the second watch and this is one of those this yeah that's what I was about to say this is one of those that if you watch you you, you get so much more payoff if you watch it a second time yes for sure you catch up a lot more the names yeah, and that, everything, because it's hard. More. Everybody has weird names, and you're kind of like, who's that? <laughs> Mouse sack? Yeah. Like right. a rat testicle? What are we talking about here? <laughs> <laughs> got mouse sack, rat boy. I mean, it just... <laughs> she couldn't think of anything better to call him. Who? Rat boy. <laughs> oh, yeah, Siri. That's rat episode boy. That's Dara. episode two, Dara. but it, yeah, she's yeah. kind of a shit. Well, she's yeah. a princess. Yeah. It happens. Well. Um, all right. Well, that's the end of episode one. So uh, come back next week. We'll go through episode two. If you want to chit chat about Witcher stuff or anything else that's fun and nerdy or Siri, whatever, I don't know. Reach out. Uh, Jeff at pot of thrones.com. Jennifer at pot of thrones.com. Kevin prefers if you talk to us first. Uh, <laughs> if you, you want to reach Kevin, we're, we, we sort his mail for him. Uh, or you can reach us on Twitter. I'm at pod of thrones. At kid free weekend. Yeah. So come say hi. Tell us what you think. Okay. Did we miss anything? Because I feel like we caught a lot between the three of us. But if we miss something, yeah. please let us know. Mm. All right. And Did we we'll, talk about the sex? The sex? Well, there wasn't a lot of sex Yeah, in we this didn't one. get to see a lot of sex in this one. No. There's more sex to come. Much sexier sex. Mm-hmm. But not in the first couple episodes. I mean, he must really smell. Yeah. But but Renfrey you didn't- always worry about the smell. <laughs> That's a turnoff. I'm telling you guys. If you stink, <laughs> no woman wants to be with you. Okay, I got two things to say about that. First of all, Renfri did not look like she was that clean. I'm sure no, she had a little bit of No, she's probably smelly too. I'm not just saying it's just him. But the one thing I find interesting everyone about... Everyone smelled back then. And yeah, probably everyone smelled back then. That's probably true too. But I do find it interesting that people keep shitting on the Witcher's outfits and how he needs to get a new set of clothes and stuff. He looks kind of badass, I think. I mean, it's all black. I think they're saying that because he armor. stinks so bad. But yeah, that's what I was thinking, is that maybe he just smells so bad right, in his armor. Right, they want armor. him to change. Because you know, when you wear armor over clothing, the clothing Oof. is going to get probably moldy at a certain point, and it's black, so you're not going to see the mold growing. It's probably got mushrooms well, on his Well, I did make two comments about his clothes. <laughs> oh? Yeah, yeah. Marelka said something, and Rinfrey said something. It mm-hmm. came up, right, exactly. It came up multiple times. Uh so he, it, but he doesn't look shabby. If you just saw him from a distance, he looks fine. He looks badass, but he probably smells terrible. Right. I would make him take a bath before you fuck him. Yes. Okay. But you definitely fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> yep. It's okay. I understand. Of he's very course handsome. you do. He's, he's very handsome. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyway, uh, enough about talking about how sexy. Uh, what's his name? I forget. The Witcher. No, the guy. The yeah. actor. Henry Cavill. Henry Superman. Cavill. That's it. Superman himself. Yes, Henry. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we'll talk more about how sexy it is in later episodes. We haven't even seen him with his shirt off yet. <sighs> what was that? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good place to end it. All right. Come back next week. We'll be back with episode two, Four Marks. 
Bye, everybody.